We are here to bring you everything and anything surrounding Porsche. I'm Mike. I'm Aaron. And this is Peak Car Talk. Oh, oh my God. Santa. Every year I'm getting closer to Mike. Exactly. And unfortunately, my ear doesn't slow down, so. <laughs> Yay! I'll be in the 50s soon before I know it. So let's get started. Um, you know how we always do every show? We thank our folks. Let's thank our people. Well, let's do it. So we have, um, we got some, a renewal. I'll just get off of that. We got old Boom Todd as a renewal. What? what? And then um, I'll go into our regular schedule. The Sriracha Boy Club members. We got Scott H., Sander A., Cody W., Aaron L., Javid V., Kaylin R., and Sean H. And then we got Sriracha Boys, Matthew G., Brian R., Matthew M., Nikki F., Todd M., again. He moved up. Yep. So, Richard P., Michael L., Ray L., Robert W., Ken S. And then we got some new Sriracha Boys, or Peacock Club people. Okay. We got uh, Corey G., Eddie M., Kevin D., and Charles A. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks, newcomers. And then we can finish it off with the producers. We got Brandon and J, Eric A, Robert G, Santiago H, Sharon C, Fernando F. Big time. Thank you all so much. As that list continues to grow, um, we'll get into some uh, later in the show. We're going to talk about Sriracha Boys and what's because we were at, I was asked on uh, the Ruckus Rally hosted by Charles Stanley uh, what's it's going to take for that. Um, clearly, people aren't listening, so I'm going to go ahead and say it again on the show. Uh, but we will get to that point. Let's no, talk. No respect. Yeah, let's <laughs> talk more recently. Um, so far, and yep. we released dates. We did four day sellout. Yeah, it did happen. I didn't thank that. you, membership. I mean, that speaks volumes. Um, you're the ones who make that happen. Obviously, the word has spread pretty quickly and like fire through uh, the community as members um, of how important this drive is and how fun it is um, for it to sell out that quickly. We didn't even do seven days, and now yeah, we have a waiting list. Too. Yeah, we have a waiting list. Um, why don't you? talk about the waiting list a little bit because don't be discouraged if you're a member and you didn't get in and you want to get in you definitely want to be on the waiting list it's not going to cost you any money you want to put your name on if you seriously want to come because things do unfortunately happen um for people that maybe are already going that something comes up right it does yeah, happen it does so what what does that I mean this happened year after year this is our third year doing it normally as time closes in yeah. Always something There's comes some, up. So. Yeah, somebody, one or two people usually have a conflict, and then, you know, the door opens for somebody else. So, so it's super easy to do this. So okay. it's pcartalk.com, and then foreign, and then you'll see foreign 2020 your waiting list, and that's it. Correct. Your email and name, that's it. And to be clear, you need to be a member to do that, right? Or, um, because it wouldn't make sense for I you mean, to be on the waiting list if you weren't a member, right? Anybody can do it. Yeah. I, I'm still going to vet you. Yeah. It still goes through us. So. Exactly. I mean, you can do it. Junkyard Dog's going to just let you go through on it. It's not going to just happen, right? Yeah, I mean, you can Yeah, you can just sign up, and then if I check you're not a member, then I'll, I might hit you with that. So <laughs> be might prepared. Get you a little bit of that. But it would make sense for you to become a PCAR Club member just yeah. so you have access to all that stuff. Um, speaking of the people that have signed up, Aaron has sent out the email to the Hellendorf, the, loca- the location and the number and the ability to sign up because we have blocked rooms yeah, at a like discounted rate. You want to right do now. that as quickly as possible so you're not on the outside in. Um, we are not the only event that's happening there that weekend. Remember what we talked about before, Oktoberfest all month long is happening in Helen during this time. Yeah. So you're going to be competing with other folks that are just visiting town yeah the hotel, um, if you um, wait too long yeah for sure uh that i feel like it filled up a lot mm-hmm. over the i mean as it got towards the weekend something else we've done just so you got your inside if you haven't gone before is we reserved uh, a parking lot there's a, like a lower parking lot that's one of the reasons we stay there yeah, they, so they block off a that. whole area that's roped the, off for us with yeah. our cars so for they like know we're coming yeah. like we're very in tune with them which is great um there's two ways to do it, right? You can do it either email and they'll yep. end up calling you or I, I just called them and told them I was with the foreign group and then they know exactly to expect you. Yep. They know what, they'll tell you what's available. They'll give you your rate. Um, so make sure you get signed up for that yeah, as soon as you can. Two different ones. There's a, um, there's a river view and then there's a, um, just a standard room and mm-hmm. they're both discounted like pretty good chunk actually. Heavily, uh, actually yeah. heavily yeah. for us. So they're taking care of us um, and we take care of them. So, and to get that many rooms, I know we have 30 people coming, but actually that's quite a bit considering 
the special event that's in town that's happening there the entire time, yeah. um, they could have just told us no. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, that, we never know what to expect. Um, but we have we have a decent relationship yeah. with them And now. the reason why we're doing it that weekend is tenfold, because we also want to be a part of that weekend, because we've discussed before that the Saturday is the family day where we kind of hit the beer gardens, we're dressed up. So we're actually going to be participating in some of that Oktoberfest on the weekend. So it's also driving and fun. So if you're bringing a guest, special we person. A good uh, amount. We have yeah. Like, I think we have 45 people, actually. Yeah, it's going to be a great group. Really, really looking forward to it. Um, just want to thank everybody again so much. I really, really means a lot to Aaron and I that you went ahead and sold out. I mean, in again, I, I keep saying that number because I'm blown away by it. It actually is very, very, I don't want to say shocking, but um, revealing in a positive way that sometimes Aaron and I do this stuff and, and, and he's doing all this backlog stuff and he's editing and he's sitting behind the computer and I'm compiling notes and we get together and do this and we don't even know if people will give a shit, to be honest with you. That's true. And we know we only have a limit. It's not like it's open to the public. Either. Yeah. So that's the other thing. We know we have a limited number of people, and 30, yeah. 30 I think, is a decent ask out yeah. of 100. Well, I mean, we just cracked over 100 members. So, I mean, we yeah. have that capability to go to, I guess, 800 if, yeah. if and everybody signed And up. another reason, too, going circling back to the waiting list, I recommend you guys do that because – that's going to help us gather data, whether you can get in or not this year, to see if we need to make an adjustment for people next year. Because that's another way for your voice to be heard as a member saying, okay, if that list, if there's 30 people on the waiting list and we filled 30 slots, Aaron and I can reevaluate to say maybe we need to meet some of this demand. But if you guys don't sign up for the waiting list and we end up getting zero people, it's going to stay at 30 forever because we're going to say, okay, well, guess no one else is interested. So that's another way for you to voice your opportunity to say, no, I want to come on this. Yes, I did miss out. And we will take that data from the waiting list to say, okay, Aaron, maybe we need to move the needle on this a little bit. Yeah. So uh, there'll, be, there'll probably be some retooling if that happens to you, just, just for a simple fact of the restaurants are only so big there. And then. Yeah, but that's back office but, stuff. Yeah. We'll, we'll work that out. But my point is, you know how people are. Once yeah. they hear something sold out, they just kind of check out, right? Yeah. I'm checked I, out. Yeah. Find so everything else. So okay. what we're saying is don't check out. Go to the website and put your name on the waiting list yep. if you were truly interested. Not if you're just actually pretending because there is still a potential that you could end up going on this thing if we call on you. So make sure if you sign up for it, you legitimately want to go on this drive. Um, and I think there's a lot of people that I spoke to that did miss out that do want to go, but they're not on the waiting list yet. So I'm speaking to you folks. Um, I'll put something in the uh, link in our bio and, and Instagram for the link tree. Okay. And so you can just um, get on the waiting list. So next topic. I was asked a lot. I was just recently at Ruckus uh, Rally. It's called The Ruckus. Now uh, last year is Blue Ridge Ruckus. We've dropped that Charles St- according to Charles Stanley. It is his rally. He does a great job with that. We'll get into the, the, the actual bullet points of The Ruckus um, here on the next topic. But I just want to bring that up because while I was at that rally, there was a lot of people that are Sriracha Boys that I was speaking to actually at Charles's rally asking me if we were going to have a Sriracha Boy rally. Um, so, yes, we would love to have one. However, like I've been saying all over and over again, in order to have a spring Sriracha Boy rally for 2023 mm-hmm. uh, in place, I think Aaron and I came to the de- you know decision of because it takes time to plan it. I would say I think the latest we could probably do this is by November. By November, we need to see at least 50 Sriracha Boys yeah. so we can plan something for maybe April. Because we, if, if it takes all the way out to April to gather that many, yes, we've maybe hit that number. But that is not enough lead time for us to actually plan a healthy event for everyone. Yeah, um, so so if you are interested in, in being in the Sriracha Boy Rally, which will be totally different than the Peacock Club Rally, um, but there are people that are dual members... You know, there is going to be two separate rallies, essentially a spring rally and a fall rally, um, but two under the same umbrella. But there'd be totally different rallies, totally different decals, totally different feels, all that stuff. Um, yes, the answer is yes, we'd love to have one. However, the membership has to speak to that. Same thing when we did our first rally with the PCAR Club. We didn't have one the first year we were there. We had to get that membership up to be able to send it to enough people to get enough people to, to come on the drive where it's worth Aaron's time, my time. Kristen's time to plan this thing to get it in and so you guys can have a good experience so if that makes sense to you and it's I hope this doesn't fall on deaf ears if you're on the fence 
But if you want to rally, you want a spring rally, and you're a PCAR club member, yeah. become a Sriracha boy. End of the story. Because yeah. clearly Aaron just said we have 100 PCAR club members. Only half of them have to become Sriracha boys to, become, to have that rally. Yeah. I'm not the smartest man in the world, but that, that's math. Got to rally around the rally. Exactly. Well, that's math. Was what I'm yeah. saying. Like, I'll pl- if those people want that rally, become a part of that. And if you're not a member of either, shame on you. Do the job eat special and become a member of both. Right. You got me. I'm joining. Done. Sold. So that's what's going on with the Sriracha rally. We do want to have it. Yep. In order to have it, you know the parameters. Let's see that meter. It's almost like a donation bar. You wish to color with the Sharpie as we go up. So when we hit the numbers. Right now, you can't see it. But yeah, gotta, exactly. I'm thermometer. motioning on the wall right now. I'm chalking it up. We've got three and a half members Sriracha Boys right now. <laughs> no, it's more than that. But we're not near 50. We're not even close. So that half is, He's going to be a whole member one of these I days. I mean, what do we got? Like maybe 15 Sriracha Boys? Yeah, I think so. They okay, so, so we're a healthy amount away. 35 people away. Need to get your shit together. Make that happen so we can have a spring rally. If you want that. We want to host that. But again, it has to make sense. I'll talk to the back office, make sure numbers are right. Okay. Do that. Those guys are. AKA himself. Yeah. (laughs) Those guys are uh, shifty. So, all right. So let's talk quickly. I didn't get to watch any of the race because I was in the mountains. I'm sure you did. Did you watch any Laguna Seca stuff? I did. I rewatched it. I watched the replay. Okay. Uh, I watched the replay under the guise of Kristen looked up the wrong data. So it was pretty interesting. She was like, we didn't even place. We got like fifth and sixth. I'm like, what? But I, I was looking. I was like, yeah, because Wrights and yeah. Path both won for their class, yeah, they right? Won. They yeah. won. But I was like, uh, we have 15 to go, and they still are both in first. <laughs> we have five to go. They're still in first. <laughs> what happens in this last five minutes? Three minutes. I was like, did something happen to both cars? No last? event. Yeah. No, they they ended up winning. Um, it was well fought. I thought. I, mean, I really thought Yemeni was strong, and mm-hmm. the um, and the Faf car. And I didn't, I didn't know that um, how um, they were going to do in GT uh, AM. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. They ended up showing out because they were kind of back and forth for a little bit. Yeah. But, so congratulations yeah. in order for the PATH Motorsports Group. Congrats for winning GTD Pro. Congrats to Wrights Motorsport. Yeah. They won uh, GTD AM. Um, Jan, I think, celebrated a birthday that weekend. I think I saw you yeah. say that on Instagram. Happy belated to him. He's a good friend of ours. Um it seems like Wright's still doing their thing, man. They're strong. They were strong yeah. last year, um, strong this year. Uh, FAF team is good. I'm just, yeah, Cor- Corvette's pretty low on exactly. that list. Anytime every I, time I could see that, I'm like, oh. I was like, oh, that C8R is sucking that dick. Well, I think that's good. Isn't it a new car for them this year or technically or something? New I, it drivers. I don't care. It's a boat anchor. Yeah. I don't care. Them new balance is weighing them down. Exactly. Them jorts they're wearing in the car is not getting it done. Then you get a new sponsorship. Yeah, cooling jorts. And then you get the, the Wrangler Lycras to wear. <laughs> like a hair, boy. Uh, oh, man. So just came back from Ruckus Rally with Charles Stanley hosting the that. Ruckus. Thank you, Charles, for hosting. Um, as always, great turnout. Always people, a lot of, a lot of eager people to go to that thing. I want to say 70-plus cars. Arizona. Yeah. A healthy parking lot anywhere. Yeah, it, it's a good-looking parking lot. Charles led the group, fast group that I was in the day one. He threw it on me the next day because he bounced out of our group and like so Look I had to you. leave. Yeah, you don't like that. That's not. Your I head. wasn't excited about it, but yeah. after like he uses and I think we should do this too. Um, and he, this isn't the first time he's done. He uses the Rever app. Okay. Um, so in order to do the Rever app, you actually have to like. Yeah, we have a, we have, have an app, but we kind of have to drive it. <laughs> so you have to like do the waypoint almost mm-hmm. and drive it um, where you build the app. Mm-hmm. Um, so they were built. You just click on it. You have to download the app. Yep. Yeah. And I had it going, and um, it's not a point by point, but it's so easy to follow because a lot of these roads are really long and twisty. There's not a lot of turnoffs, um, so I led day two, first half, and then we ran into rain um, the second half of the day. Like, yeah. we're, so as we were having lunch, it started raining. Did you pull up, put your wets on? No, I actually made the call as a group, and I said, "Hey, you guys can do whatever you want, but I'm going to take whoever's willing to go back with me. I'm not going to lead us in this rain." Um, I'm on our triple eights anyway, so that's yeah. not safe for me. You're on and we were at commu- we were at community pl- pace anyways. At yeah. the, it was raining enough, and there was that slick out where it didn't make sense. Um, so I made the judgment call to bring us back. We just started drinking early, which was fine. Everybody, we had a good morning run. We ran really hard for mm-hmm. a while, uh, all the way up till about eleven thirty, like lunchtime, and then the rain kind of hit. Yeah. Um, yeah, and normally I wouldn't have liked to have led. I was kind of apprehensive about it, but 
I followed that app, and once I got in the zone, it didn't matter. Clean air was nice. Huh? Oh yeah. No, nobody. I mean, I've led before, yeah. but not like officially all day. Like yeah. sometimes the groups will get broken up, and if I'm like with Sean and Todd, sometimes even That's when if we're doing stuff. our own yeah. thing, like I'm just out front. So my my thing to him, and this isn't an arrogant thing. I w- I was actually really concerned about it because when you're the leader. You want to be concerned about people's safety as well. Yep. So, like, sometimes if I have all that clean air and I have all that clean road, I just go all the way, like, as fast as I can go. And that's not necessarily the answer <laughs> all the time, especially when you have 10 cars in tow. Exactly. Because if they're trying to keep up with you, they may out be in a position where they're compromised. So Charles does a really good job as a leader because he recognizes there's all different levels, even in a fast group. Mm. And I was concerned about myself because – like i'm like a dog i don't have any damn sense like if you give me all that road i'm just gonna eat it up i'm just gonna keep going and going and going and going and going it's like hey man like we've been going for two hours straight can we take a piss break i'm like you pussies let's go (laughs) yeah (laughs) copy (laughs) (laughs) but uh no i actually did a good job i behaved um we had a pee break in there too in the morning like I was being more mature i gave everybody a break to stretch their legs grandpa exactly chilling gt car yeah Less Mohawk Mike, like more chill. Yeah. Uh, Grandpa Stanley out there. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, actually, I mean, we ran for a good clip. And um, I, I know that's, for me, I think it was more the responsibility. It was It's a big responsibility up front. Even though it's not your fault, everybody's in control of their own car. I would feel horrendous if I felt like I was pushing the pace that I was pushing. Yeah. And then somebody went off because. Yeah, because they're going to follow. Yeah, yeah follow because I'm pushing, I'm pushing too yeah. hard. And there's no reason for that other than that my brain is broken and I push hard all the time. Like, you shouldn't have to do that, but I just don't have a... It's like an on-off switch. I just don't know. Um, But I think I, for my own self, I did pretty good and actually matured a little bit on that rally to get thrown into that fire to lead it. I was like... I was even talking to myself like a (laughs) freaking psychotic person. I'm like, all right, don't crash anybody. Be good. You know, take your moments to really rip when you can, but hey, make sure you bring everybody back. And that was another reason why I made the judgment call at lunch because I rains. didn't want to yeah. jeopardize anyone's safety in the rain because there's so many other re- – I mean, even when it's dry, it's dangerous. Yep. I mean, now you throw the element of rain and the hazard, it's – And you don't. I mean, you you hope everybody is to the same level as you are, like, for it's like checking your stuff, making sure your tires yeah, are Yeah, but you don't know that. Yeah, know. yeah, exactly. So, again, that falls back. At least for me, I feel like I'm the leader of yeah. trying to keep it's everything of, yeah, to keep everything together. Mm-hmm. Um, and thankfully, our, everybody came back safe in our group. Everybody came back with their car. Um, that's great. And Charles, a very successful event. It was fun to see everybody. Any cool cars that you're like didn't see before? Or? Yeah, there was a couple. There was a couple different new. There, and, that, and that's what I was gonna say. I'm glad you brought that up. There was a lot of new faces. A lot of these times, there's a lot of regulars at a lot of these mm-hmm. events. A whole slew of people couldn't make this because they were actually at Smokey's GTs the week before, um, so they couldn't go back to back. Mm-hmm. So a lot of them went to Smokey's GT could make and they couldn't make the ruckus, which was very next week, um, and actually a lot further out. I mean, it was in Roanoke, Virginia, and a lot of the guys I'm talking about, like the South Florida guys, like none of the Miami guys came, and it's not because they didn't want to; they just the logistics of it just couldn't happen. Yeah, yeah. Can you now drive another few yeah. hours up? And then, yeah, in know, a different car. In a different car. The only way they could have done it is ship their air cools yeah. up the week they were up there for the GTs, basically taking the GT car home or have it shipped home yeah. and just stayed up there. Like, it just wasn't feasible. Everyone's making up events this year. Like, yeah. There's, there's so it just wasn't events. feasible yeah. for a lot of people. So there was a lot of new faces. So there was a lot of new cars. There was a couple. Um, didn't really talk to them, but I kind of got to see the cars, which were pretty cool. There was one wrapped in, like, almost like a royal blue. Um, I think it was an M... What I think it's a, what is it called? Like a, what is it? The wider body, but it's just an NA motor, um, M34, not 341 or something. I don't know. Yeah. Like you, I, I don't pay attention to that car, but it's some, some code like that where it's a wide body NA car, uh, like Carrera, G body Carrera okay. looked really, really good. Had a Carrera tail on it. Um, very unique color. I know it was a wrap they had on it, but it looked awesome. Uh, he was running like 15 inch, uh, Campanolos on it with huge, like meaty Pirellis on it, yeah, like mon- nice. like it looked like it came straight off like the '73 Iraq Challenge, basically. That's cool. It looked tough as nails, and I was like, man, that's fuck. If I owned a G body, it would look like that. That looked tough. Um, that was a big standout for me. Like that car, I really, really like that car. It wasn't in our run group, but I remember seeing it in the parking lot. Um, really cool looking car. Um, the other cars I had seen a lot of. 
Um, it's funny. There's uh, Justin Butler. He uh, he ran in our group. He he shot the photography and video. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. It's uh, under The Ruckus 2022, or you can find it under Justin Butler on uh, YouTube. He did a really good job. The video's already out. It's only five minutes long. But uh, he rode in front of me for a while, and then he rode behind me for a little bit. Um, and he's got a, a, a Carrera G-Body. And, man, he can push that car. He's really good with that car. Like, it's he's dialed in, like, for not having a shit ton of horsepower. And his car just looks the best. It's all black. He's got... Um, the uh i rock mirrors the tiny mirrors on mm-hmm. it so it narrows it down um it's a narrow body car it's all black black fuchs black everything it like how i have x's on my headlights to protect it he has the same x's on his headlights it just looks like darth vader's carrera it's yeah. it's very cool it's always dirty as hell uh, like it should be um it's got a lot of road pits like mine does on it just looks like that car like whoever owns that if you don't even know you see that car you're like this car fucks like that kind of shit like yeah. that's but in, and i i really like justin's car i remember looking at him when he was riding behind me and i was right behind charles for a long time looking at him in the rear view i was like man that car looks tough man um uh, i kind of like that and obviously charles's car always looks good and it's yep. unique in its own Classic. way yeah um so yeah there were some good cars out there um big shout out to a lot of people out there in that group and everybody's it's always fun everybody has a good time and it's just nice to see that many air cooleds in one place um and it's not like my first time I've been there, but it, every time you do that, it's in, and what I love about it, it's, it's not some static show where everybody's just yep. driven their car to put on some concourse. Everybody there, regardless of their skill set or how hard they're going to drive it, they're going to drive it that day no matter what. They may just be putzing around or they may be in the fast group going hard as hell and getting tons of rock chips. Yes, there's different levels to that, but the point is everybody there is there to drive that car. So that speaks volumes for the event itself. And, I mean, we've spoken to we're blue in the face about how we feel about driving events. That's, yeah. that's our DNA. That's what we do. Like them. Yeah, as opposed to like, oh, let's just meet up in a grass field and oh, yeah, shine them up. Yeah. Um, again, makes zero sense to me. I mean, to each their own. I'm not saying you're wrong for doing it. It just Which doesn't. That's fine. <laughs> Aaron said it. I did it. Uh, but it just doesn't, it doesn't spark me up. You know, it doesn't make sense. Like, oh, are you going to come to the, oh, the New Hampshire uh, Concourse at uh, the 18 hole? Uh, and we're going to roll them all out. And you're like, yeah, I'm going to travel all the way to New Hampshire to go stand around and look at fucking cars on a field. Makes zero sense. Like, what are you really there to do? You're there to schmooze with other people, right? Everybody else is exactly. like wacky. Who else is there? Yeah, yeah, everybody's cranking each other off at those things. Like, oh, your car's so good. Oh, your car's so good. I don't even know what it sounds like when it runs. I just have the guys push it off the truck. <laughs> like, what the hell's the point of that, man? Even that Prius, same sound. Yeah, exactly. Um, but anyways, that was a ruckus. It, I figured it needed its time. It did. It was deserved. Um a lot of things happened during that event, meaning like there were other things happening in, in at least North America, right, um, and overseas. We'll talk about the DTM thing because that happened that weekend too. Uh, so in, to count, Charles's rally happened. Um, Laguna Seca happened out west. The DTM rally happened, not rally, a DTM race that happened in Europe. And then the HSR MIDI happened at Road Atlanta the same weekend we were there. Yeah. Um, a really good friend of ours and a very, I would consider him a brother, this guy um, is a member, but also a very um, avid rally goer, and he was kind of torn because he owns a race car, and his dream is to race an HSR, and he's been doing his dream. He has a 73 RSR, yep. um, and he couldn't make the event. So he wanted to be there, got to hang out with him a little bit, but phenomenal. I wanted to give him a shout-out. Big Sean, at, he shaved four seconds off his lap time at Road Atlanta. Four a lot seconds. Of, a lot of seconds. That's an eternity yeah. at, on a racetrack. Yeah. And if, let that sink in for a minute. He shaved four seconds off. Just from everywhere? Or was there still like a certain thing he was trying to... I didn't get into the details like with him, but I mean, he got down to a 141. That's pretty fast. And he's running a 73 RSR. That's an old, old girl. That is an old girl. He is hustling around that track, and he is earning everything he can get out of that thing. Slip angle, ass happy on every turn yeah. he can be... Um, good for him, um, doing his dream, doing his thing. He was with us in spirit at the ruckus. Uh, I just figured he deserved the shout out because I mean, he was doing what I'd rather be doing. Not that I, I don't like doing the rally stuff, but you know, he was doing some grown man shit. 
Yeah. That's that's more. Uh, hey, I got my shit together. I'm out on track. I'm shaving seconds out here. Oh, I'm ra- I'm in an actual race car. You guys are out there playing around. I, oh, your car's registered. That's cute. Like mine, mine's not allowed to drive on the street. That's what I do. She's too mean. Exactly. Um, so good for him. Big up for him. He deserved the time. I just want to give him a shout out. Um, hoping to sneak my way into that car eventually. Maybe. <laughs> I know. It's like I want to share that car Can so bad that? with him. You saw that I'll probably be that. awful in it. He'll be so much faster than me, but I don't care. Just for the experience, I'll be like, I will literally be like Ricky Bobby after the just fire. One time. Like oh, when yeah. he's sitting in the car going like three miles an How hour. Fast am I going? And the no, cars are like blowing yeah, by him. And he exactly. goes, What was that? He's like, those are the other cars, Ricky. He's like, oh, my God. What? And they're blowing by him at track speed, and he's going like 15 miles an hour like he's in a school zone. You're in first gear, Ricky. Yeah, he's like, those are the other cars, Ricky. It's like, shit, that'll probably be me in that car. I'll just be out there. Ah. I was like, yeah, the fire, I'm on fire, I'm on fire. He's like, you aren't on fire, Ricky. I'm just out front. I don't see anybody. <laughs> must, be, must be going so fast. I don't hear none of the cars. That's because uh, they're about to lap you. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, let's take a quick break, and then uh, we'll talk about some more stuff on the backside. Right. We back at it. All right. So Porsche made an announcement for the LMDH car um, that they're more than likely not going to be running four cars at uh, Le Mans. What that means is, if it sounds like a lot, but the North American team has their own team, and then there's a European team usually, and they both mm-hmm. run two cars each, a uh, two-man team. So when in turn, they haven't made the announcement that they're not running a North American team, but essentially... They're not running a North American team. So there's going to be a two-car stint, but the European cars are going to be running probably the Enduros in the U.S. that matter for the WEC Challenge, but the ones that don't matter, they won't be at it. So no, just like the factory team used to. Exactly. Back so we'll see them at Sebring. We'll see them at Daytona, but you won't see them at, okay, prime example, Laguna Seca this last weekend, that two-hour yeah. sprint race. Yeah. They're not going to be at it. If it's not an Enduro, they're not going to be at it. They'll be at... Um, at the end of the year, they'll be at Midi or uh, Road, Atlanta. Road Atlanta at the end of the year at the 10 hour. So the big Petit Enduros, yeah, they'll be at Petit Le Mans. Thank you. The long Enduros, they'll be at that. That We'll see the LMDH so card next we, year. We benefit from living where we live then. That's yeah. It. At least we're going to get two of them, right? Yeah. And then we could easily fly Possibly to Atlanta and yeah. watch watch that one if you really want to see the LMDH. Driving in the rain again. Long story. Hell to the no. No, yeah. If you haven't heard that story, dig deep in the files. It's there. It's got to be somewhere. Yeah. I think I'm still have a creak in my neck from that three years ago, but that was a very uh, silent ride back to, <laughs> to Tampa. Aaron he's and I like, had. He's an angry person when he's sleepy. <laughs> Sleep deprived, hungry, and you gotta poop, but you don't want to poop at some ra- like random place. Yeah. Like yeah, that's that makes for an ang- I think anybody would be yeah. angry with that situation. I don't think I'm unique long, to that. No, it was a long drive. Dude. Yeah. Um, Anyways, the point of that bringing this up, I didn't want to get into the de- <laughs> defecation here, but uh, that prototype car um, is similar situation. Uh, when Porsche ran the prototype car mm. when they were winning, they didn't run a North American specific team. They probably don't have parts to be running four cars. Well, I was just thinking about the cost. Yeah, that like too. that would be fucking really expensive to do that, wouldn't it? Yeah, yes, two it would. separate teams. Yeah, and try it, plus driver costs, plus all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, it would give you the best chance to win them off. You fielded four cars. I agree with that. But I'm thinking from a motorsport cost, like if you, because every team, believe it or not, has a budget every year. I think that would be so high it wouldn't make any sense for them. From a consumables, engines, and the crew that they have to run to support that, everything. I wonder if, because um, we talked about some build hours on, on other motors, I wonder what the build hours are for for this series, if it's any different, because it's not fully combustible. It would be stuff that they wouldn't share until when they would retire the car. Yeah. Because... So we'll never know. Yeah. Well, we would, but like they're not going to run that, that, that LMDH car forever. Like, it's a new series. Five years in the future. Yeah. Thanks. It's a new series. They'll run it. Like, it's trade secrets, right? Like, they want people to probably think they're doing or guessing. Maybe they're not rebuilding. Maybe they are rebuilding. They can do whatever they want because it's a prototype. So there's no requirements that they have to rebuild the engine. Shit, who knows? Maybe they don't rebuild it all year. You don't know. Um, but that secrecy is part of that element of strategy, cool. right? Um, so I'm excited to see that. I mean, we're almost halfway through the year already, and we'll be – I have never gone to the Roar before the 24, but I may actually go – yeah. in 2023 because we get to go for free with the the passes that we get true. um i may go just <laughs> i forgot i've already paid for passes yeah we already. both did already because yeah, remember they kind of strong-armed yeah, us um but in a good way i'm glad it's out of the way yeah. but uh 
I may actually go just because I'm so curious to see the LMDH car. I don't. I want to see it before it's having to do um, the actual race. It'd be nice to watch it yeah, qualify. Yeah, be a little emptier there. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool to see it qualify. Yeah. And it should be running for the full livery, whatever it's going to run. Mm-hmm. So we'll be able to see that too. And Which is the camouflage livery, probably. <laughs> just the digital <laughs> camo forever. <laughs> that works. It's got that uh, BMW uh, paint that it changes colors constantly yeah. as it's driving. Oh, my yeah. God. How how would that... That would screw everyone up optically. That car would probably get, like, banned if it did something probably. like that. Be like running chrome wrap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's really sunny. Put the chrome on. <laughs> <laughs> sunflower, sunflower. <laughs> anyway, so that's that'll be exciting. So that's news. I'm reading between the lines on that. Now, Porsche did say they weren't going to do that, but they did say they're not going to run four cars. So if you read between the lines with that, with that, what, with that what means there's do. no dedicated North American team. <laughs> Tomorrow there'll be a headline saying... We're not going to run North. Yeah, there's America. no North American dedicated team. They're like, how'd you guys know this? That's all we've been doing lately. Yeah. So same weekend, I know I mentioned this earlier, the DTM team uh, with Fanthor, they raced yeah. um, this past weekend. The big news in that is, so that DTM race has been around forever, but they're mm-hmm. allowing GT cars in it now for the first time. This is the first season they're allowed it. So yeah. they're running a GT3R Porsche uh, Vanthor's team. Uh, I think it's SSR. I think yeah, they're, that's they're right. Yeah. It's like lime green and yeah. black. Is their so they're right. running that car. He's super familiar with that car. He he helped run that car when they run Spa. They run freaking Nurburgring. Stays in his garage. Yeah. That yeah. That, that was at the Grello car or whatever. Yeah. Like that Grello car is pretty pretty sick. He pretty much uh, dailies that car. So <laughs> goes that. Goes Didn't down. he get a, um, uh, a chalk GT3 Touring? He did, but he, he got did. rid of it though. Oh, he, he did. Yeah, he got the. Uh, the GTS um, oh, we got Sport the, uh, Turismo. Sport Turismo. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he traded. Well, I think that. he sold it. I don't think he traded. I, it. And he I probably don't made think any of that happened a. To you. I think. I think. I think he, he, I think he. I mean, because he's not going to get. They're not going to be mad at him. He probably yeah. cashed out and made two hundred two hundred thousand euros on the GT three Touring, and then turned around and actually probably used the profit to just buy a brand new car. That's probably what he did. With his driver discount, he probably paid actually less for the Sport Turismo Touring GTS at his rate and just the profit of the other car paid cash for it. I guarantee Imagine. that's what happened. Or that, they just let him swap it. Like, oh, you want to swap it? Cool, it makes money. There's no way. But anyways, um, he was racing in DTM. The reason why I bring up DTM it, uh, in that race, it's significant in the sense that they're allowing GT cars in it. Usually it's pretty mundane it's series. Been BMW, Mercedes, and Audi for like Forever. Forever. Yeah, yeah, so now there's so many other manufacturers because they've opened up the uh, the classifications and what's allowable. Um, however, man, they hit Porsche hard. Very Good first day. race, they BOP'd the shit out of them. 20 uh, kilograms, like way That's down. So they threw an anchor in the car and made them compete. So I wanted to ask you, how do you feel about that? Because generally speaking, in the EMSA series, all the stuff we watch... And if you're not familiar with this, this is kind of a rule of thumb. And this isn't written anywhere. So this is where you get into the gray with the racing. You really have to be in tuned with it to understand what's happening here. For example, when Chevy brought out the C8R um, two seasons ago. Mm. Uh, was it two seasons ago? or No, last year, I guess. Well, I guess it would be this no, season and last season, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Two seasons ago. Um, they pretty much get a blind eye because so when you're a new car in a series, yeah. they don't know how to properly they BOP you because yeah. they don't have anything to base the car on. So it actually benefits you a lot of times as a manufacturer to have a car that hasn't raced in a series because they can't properly regulate the car. And then you just don't put it in first when you qualify. Exactly. You just got to yeah. hang back. Yeah, like, you, you hey. get a good time. You know, you leave some on the table. Yeah. Um, so in a sense... Chevy got a pass all year long while Porsche was getting beat down on their car. They didn't get it like, okay, hey, we know what this car's capable of doing, so they always getting BOP for something. Okay, your arrow's too good. Like, this is good. So they penalizing the car constantly. That's why Chevy probably ran away, in my opinion, I'm just saying, with the championship the year that he did because they were zero BOP penalties. Um, pro- fast forward, or rewind, I should say, rewind maybe four or five years before that when uh, Ford was racing the Ford GT when it first came out. No BOPs on that car because guess what? IMSA as a race entity controls its own thing. It happens. So when a manufacturer decides to run a car in that series, they want to encourage that car to be there. So that's why they don't penalize it 
because they want it to continue to be successful because that brings money to the sport, that brings money to EMSA. So again, why the GT was so spectacular that year? Zero penalties on that car. Mm. So I'm painting this picture because in the DTM series, yes, that Porsche 911 GT3 R isn't a new car manufacturer. However, it's new to the series. And you would think as the DTM sanctioning series wouldn't BOP that car because they're excited to have that car there. They actually went the exact opposite way and penalized the shit out of the car in the very first race, which leaves me kind of baffled, to be honest with you. Yeah. I After don't... everything I just said. Yeah, it does make sense. Because you would think they would be encouraged that now that this is a new car in their series, they should mm. be happy it's there. They're almost kind of saying for the teams, these are privateer teams sponsoring these cars. If they're going to get beat down like that and, and have such a challenging opportunity to be successful in that series, why would they even race in that series? It's a waste of money if yeah, they're being penalized. So, so, so it's a business decision for, for, the, for the team. Like SSR, if this keeps happening to them, I promise you that car won't be there next year because they're just going to pull out of the series. Yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't see them lasting or wouldn't want to be putting up with all the different restrictions. Because why would you want to run a car that's going to be restricted every year or every race, I should say? Yeah, if they, if they continue to do that. Um, it's cool that they did expand into other makes versus just the regular three because, that I mean, I never wanted to go to a DTM Me race. Me neither. Because of that reason, so. And I wasn't alive or had enough sense to know when DTM was great in the 80s. Yeah. Hey, what's this? Yeah. All right. So this is like a I small mean, series. We were nowhere. That, yeah. We were in elementary school. Yeah. And it wasn't big in the it's U.S. That was anywhere. a, yeah, that yeah. was a, that's a Euro thing. Yeah. Um, I knew it existed when I became a teenager. I didn't even know it existed when I was a kid, but again, you still couldn't watch it. Mm. I would see them in magazines that there was a, a DTM series. Um, but yeah, really baffling when I read that about that and I saw Van Thor and, Vanthor being the consummate professional, he was asked about the BOP, totally dodged the whole thing, didn't even comment on it. Um, but we mean? know that because we've mean 44 pounds? We've talked to Larry yeah. a bunch of times, and he doesn't get into that stuff. He just runs the car. And, like, he'll talk to us offline in person. He's yeah. told us a lot of stuff that we're not allowed to repeat. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm sure he, behind closed doors he was like, Shiza. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sure. The first lap, he went from 11th to 7th place, and he held that. So Exactly. I'm sure if he, if he had 50 less pounds, he'd be doing... Well, it was like the one year well, when we watched... I think you and I were actually together for some of it. It's such a long race, so that obviously we s split up at certain parts. We watched some of the Le Mans race yeah. the year when uh, I think they got... Porsche factory team got penalized on weight. Yep. They got penalized on aero, and they got penalized on power. So they had all three BOPs at Le Mans. And then on the Mulsanne straight, we watched cars oh, literally walk, walk yeah. away from them. They walked them in the first. In the which should the first never happen. 300 feet of the and, track. And then they would click in on some of the driver conversations sometimes. And I mean, it was bleeped out a lot <laughs> of what was going down. And it literally looked like there was a parachute behind the car the whole time. And that's how significant a BOP can do when the tolerance of those cars are so close, right? I mean, that is a major, major blow. Um, and it's basically, and it sucks because that's such a good race. And yeah, you to, to get F, to get just let them eat. Yeah, to get F like that. Yeah. But um, anyways, so let's go ahead and close. Um, I know this isn't super new news, so I don't want to like say this is breaking because we're talking about it, but I want to talk about it as a, as what we feel about the car. Porsche Classic, uh, the 911, it's coming out. They do. But, yeah. Sport Classic. Sport Classic, yeah. Make it 1,250 of them. All of them are already sold before they even did a reveal. Classic. Yeah. Um, Porsche AG controls these specialty cars. So if you were wondering out there, just for G whiz sakes, these things never go down to the dealership level where you're like, oh, well, I wonder why my dealer never talked to me about it. Even if you're a high roller there, they're not because you would get an email. Um, we were fortunate enough, I think, who did I, I forget who it was, but anyways, a long story, just they were getting a 935 and Porsche AG emailed them. And it's pretty, I guess, spammy, I guess, in a way, because they got an email saying, hey, are you interested in the 935? Uh, this is you have been given an opportunity, and that's actually Porsche Auto Group, the main corporate center, yeah. saying you you have an opportunity to buy this car. That's how this kind of stuff gets sold. They have clientele across all over the world, and they already pre-picked. And you better believe there's not a single one that's going to say no. 
Um, so they're already all sold before the reveal even comes out. Um, they get an email like on a rendering and what it's going to look like and the power and all this kind of crap. And it's basically a yes or no. <laughs> I think it, I've, in my opinion, I think this is the best looking one they've done. I think it looks, yeah, it's it looks, the most powerful for yeah, sure. It looks so from good. a power standpoint, um, 543 horsepower, 442 foot pounds of torque, um, not an NA motor. How do you feel about that? Well, I mean, kind of lines up with what they did last time where they didn't like not, not it being the most powerful thing they have in the box. Yeah. Like so good, this is a little bit but, notched back. This is a twin turbo turbo S motor essentially. I mean, still better than a GTS or uh, a Carrera S motor last time. Yeah, I agree with that. So, um, here's the big ticket item with this vehicle: manual, seven speed, rear wheel drive only. So it's pretty much the best version of a GT2 RS, like GT2. Yeah, because so, it's manual. Yeah. Because you couldn't even get a manual GT2 RS anymore. Like the yeah. newest one was a paddle shift, the Y SOC car, and all yeah. that. So the 997.2 GT2 RS that is some Halo King that brings a million dollar price tag now on the used market, essentially this car has more power than that and same kind of DNA with a manual transmission rear wheel drive only. So I would imagine this car secondhand, even those 1,250 people take delivery of this, once we start to see these things maybe hit the market or take delivery or one of those it's folks, like, yeah. this is going to be, this will probably do seven figures, right? It's already three, I, 300, I think is 300 ish MSRP. Cause yeah. it's 276. Euro. So it's going to be a three X probably car yeah. on second hand, right? At a minimum I'm thinking. So seven, so a million dollars probably second hand for somebody who to take this car, even if they, you know, didn't drive it, even if there's only delivery miles on, I still think it's a million plus car. Yeah, for sure. Hold on to it. And it looks good. I think oh, yeah, it, it looks great. I think it looks better than the uh, 997, and I like the 997 a lot. Do you think it could have taken it to the next level if they would have went with the 4-liter manual in this, though, the GT3 motor? I mean, it could, but then, like... Do you then think it would just be a GT3, right? Yeah, then, then people be like, oh, it's a Touring with a Ducktail? Touring with a Ducktail, yeah, exactly. Maybe they, think that, maybe they thought that wouldn't be special enough. Yeah. You're probably right with that, though, because that's probably why they didn't do that, because... The naysayers that would even be buyers like us yeah. that are the shit talkers out there that would, oh, why didn't they do this? Why didn't they do that? That's probably why they didn't do it because they're like, oh, it's basically just a touring with a ducktail. Yeah, but that's only 1,250 of those. Yeah. There'd be a lot more tourings and a lot more. No, you're you know, right. But so. I'm just saying, but like I, from its DNA's perspective, I, like they never do, they haven't made a turbo manual car in over 10 years. Yeah. So I think and turbo S one, so that means it's got all the goodies, yeah. like all the the bigger turbos. So and, and and to finish that off, the turbo cars they were making were all wheel drives, and the mm. only rear wheel drive cars were the GT two or the GT two RS. They were specialty ones. So this does really fall into the rare era of being rear wheel drive, yep. manual, twin turbo. It says it's three point seven. It's fucking three point eight. Three point eight. Three point seven. Yeah, no, 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 yeah no, no, no. exactly. Um, twin turbo motor producing 543 50, horsepower, yeah, but it's easily 550. That's without that's safe mode. I'm sure this thing's probably going to be hopefully one of those people, one of the 1250, hopefully, is a Hoonigan yep. and dials this thing up and just really Widowmaker's back, yeah, it with a ducktail, yeah. Um, so I just wanted to you know talk about stats on that, our thought process behind it. Not that we're trying to break the news, obviously, this broke a while ago, um, like a week or so ago. I thought it was funny, actually. It was leaked before it was revealed. Yeah. And I wonder if that was intentional. Because you never know with, like, marketing ploys if that was intentional. It's or like, hey, what do you guys think about this? Exactly. Oh. Like, Type 7's leaking it, but car, but their, their car and driver photos that haven't even hit press yet. <laughs> so these, I'm kind of like... These look familiar. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Is, is this is what we're doing now? We're, we're not... And then they're actually in tune, like Porsche's in cahoots with it. They're like, yeah. "Oh yeah, somebody leaked it," and like actually it was all it was all predestined to be leaked. What's your What's your opinion on this Porsche Heritage package, like with the meatball and things? Yeah, it's okay. I mean, I would if you're you going, yeah, yeah. If you're gonna go, I fear if you're gonna go, you might as well option the hell out of it, right? I like the gold battery. Yeah, but also there's also something to think about this too like when people did 911 Rs right there were 911 Rs where they're like oh you can get like green stripes or red stripes some people got no stripes and that made the car even more special 
you know. Yeah, if you can do something where like we're the being ma- different, you have to kind of figure figure what the majority's n- not going to do, and you have to do that because then it'll take that car to the next level. Almost like when the Ford GT it came there, with all those, those bracing, you know, packages with all the stripes and all that, and people mm-hmm. are just getting plain Jane black ones. Those are going for the most money. But I was, yeah. I was seeing if there was any like variations in that, or if it's just really just one. one I think it's just one car. I don't think they're screwing around because the last Sport Classic, it was that was it. Yeah, it was um, that oh, oh, oh. battleship light gray. No, they've got other options. They got black, gentian blue, metallic, and they're doing paint to sample finishes. Oh, those are going to be heavy duty money. Wow, Sport Classic in a Ooh, boy. G- imagine that in like a oat green or dark olive with whoever like gold, gets gold wheels. Gonna, whoever gets a BTS is going to just cash in. Just yeah. Go ahead and yeah, you just made a couple mil by just buying That's the car. Two eighty seven MSRP. Yeah, so you spend two seven two two hundred seventy thousand to make one five. That sounds like a good deal. Yeah, because you, in this market, I would flip that in a heartbeat. As badass as that would be, you had no sense in collecting that car. It didn't make any sense. It's just gonna. Unfortunately, we talk about this tool all the time. These specialty cars, they never see any road work. Not a single one. They all sit in like shined up with diapers with spotlights on them. That's it. It's a shame. Like it's great engineering, great machinery that never gets put in play. It sucks. I mean, uh, minus I'll I'll touch on this for a second just because I I thought it was amazing. I wasn't there to witness this. This was stories that I heard from other people. It doesn't make them less true because I saw video footage of it actually happening. Um, There was an older gentleman, 75 years old at Smokey's GT in a Carrera GT that has 18,000 miles on it. He took delivery of the car and he's put 18,000 miles on it. He had it on track and he was blasting that thing through the mountains. Good for you, old timer, because I hope to be that guy someday because that, I mean, he's just, yeah, he bought it new, but he's had the rise and fall of it. That car at its peak, still even with that kind of mileage, sells for over a million dollars and he's ripping it on the track, no fucks given. That's my kind of dude. Yeah. Like there needs to be more guys like that. And I think the people that were at Smokey's GT, if the ones that were there that were at Ruckus was telling me the story about him, and which makes total sense because they're harder than a lot of other Americans are. This dude was actually Austrian. Okay. Makes and he sense. had like an Austrian accent. And I'm like, yeah, yeah he gets it. Yeah, because he has like, some chalet. Um, yeah, and he just yeah. beats the shit out of it. He's like, oh, this is my toy. Yeah. I don't care how much it's worth. You yeah, know, which I'm worth. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, oh, this is a Peanuts. Um, I don't have anything else. Do you have anything else for him? I don't. I was excited by this Carrera GT story, though. I know, That's right? Cool. That'll make your eyes light up for a second. So, circling back, highlights of the show. Get your ass on there. Become a Sriracha Boy so we can do a Sriracha Boy rally. I'll close with that. Thanks, Become a freaking P-Car Club member. Cut the shit. Because, and then get on the waiting list. So if we need to adjust how many spots we have, we can do that accordingly. Because if without the data, we're just fishing in the dark, man. We can't do it without you. That's true. So let us know. All right? Sounds good. We'll talk right. to you on the next one. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of PCAR Talk. Connect with us on Instagram at PCAR Talk or online at PCARTalk.com.